you. Well, I think you lost some weight. They paroled me three months ago. They're so looking for you everywhere. Is this your place? My place? When did you move in here? Uh, about a month ago. Photography, who taught you all this? Stayed in New York, you're kidding. Rehabilitation. It's the new thing for first offenders. What do you do? Cheesecake, pen-ups? And all that. And all that. I always wanted to be a photographer. How much do you make? I do all right. You always had the luck some jail they sent you to. Didn't they teach you a trading sign? Oh, sure. L and L, four hours a day. L and L? Laundry and latrines. I'm the new Mr. Clean. Hey, you're not married, are you? No, she just comes in to... To what? To clean up. She does more than that. Lisa? Lisa, in a dump like this? Seen her yet? Not a trace. But you have looked. Bet I've looked, she owes me two grand. Me too. She promised she'd double it for me by the time I got out. Instead, she takes off. I'll kill her. You couldn't kill anybody. Least of all, Lisa. So where's the action? What action? Like you said in your message, if you want a quick and easy grand. So that's what I want. If you want a quick and easy grand, come to 27B Grogan Street at 9 exactly. The door's open. Only next time, phone me yourself. If you'd popped out of there a second sooner, you'd have caught these in your teeth. You did send that message. No? You got the same message? Just like that. Then he hung up. Who hung up? Search me. Thought it must be from you. And all this? Go on, say it. This isn't your place and your flat broke. You're, you're not even a pornographer. I'm worse than broke. I owe 800 to a loan shark, and I'm a month behind with the interest. Oh, that's bad. So if you could stake me for, say, 250 if I don't come up with some juice by Monday, they're taking me to the dentist. 250 says, and I haven't even eaten since I got out. How much for this? Cameras. You can't give them away. So who lives here? Give me a second. I'll find something. Now what do we have here? Enough cold cuts for a long weekend. Don't. Hey, this photographer is crafty. He keeps a 20 in the back of the freezer. So leave it there. And leave that alone. Who now, does live here? Now if I could just find the mustard. And who sent that message? It's strange how you degenerate as soon as you're free. Stir, I can guzzle any slot they dish out. And now when I can't find the mustard, I get the shakes. What did he sound like? I got it. What did who sound like? The Joker who phoned? Uh, some kind of foreigner. Five to one it was put on. Where were you when he phoned? My usual place. And you? My usual place. So, so... Lisa? It's gotta be Lisa. Who else knows where to find us? What's through there? Bedroom and bathroom. Another entrance? No, bars and all the windows, just like these. I wonder if this place is bugged. Lisa! Shut up! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Who is it? Good evening, Mr. Solomon. You've got the wrong place. Oh, have I? Then can I be interested you in a rug for your bathroom? I'd be giving these away at 695, but for you, sir. No rugs, thank you. Then if I may just deliver my message. Who from? From the party who phoned you not half an hour ago. Then why didn't you say so? Thank you, Mr. Tom. That's not my name. Oh, oh I beg your pardon. I had no idea you were there. Now, I'll be candid and honest with you, gentlemen. Strictly speaking, this is not my carpet. I discovered it in a pile of junk in that torn down building at the back here. And seeing as it's a little damp and a bit cheesy, a dollar seventy-five on the my way. Look, let's just have the message and then take that stingy thing out of here. Where's Lisa? I beg your pardon, Mr. Tom. Let's get this straight, Buster. That is not my name, and I've never heard of such a person. But it's a grand name, don't you think? Good old Mike Tall. Don't you think it suits him fine? Sergeant Carlino? Sergeant who? And you will be Sergeant Carlini. Come on, who are you? I'm Harry Road Jr. and Senior from Scarsdale. All right, Mr. Rope Jr. and Sr., the message is out. Who sent you here? The message, children, 
is that once upon a time, there were two small con artists. I believe they've just come out of jail, poor fellows. One of them was tall and rugged, and he'd drop in on a housewife when he was alone and pretend to be an old friend of her husband's. The other would turn up a little later as a police detective. But the real brains of the outfit was a beautiful and talented girl. She could be young and old, French, Italian, or Katie from Kansas. Where is Lisa? Well, both men fell for her. I would make little passes when the other wasn't looking. <laughs> and with quite a pathetic lack of success. Finally, she got bored with them, made an anonymous phone call to the police, and then disappeared, taking their loot with her. As they say, there's no one quite so gullible as a con man in love. Who sent you here, and who are you? If Lisa told you all that, why didn't she just come here herself? Where is she? Are you working for Lisa, or is Lisa working for you? We are now all working for Lisa. You said on the phone, a uh, quick and easy grant. That is correct. Plus the 2000 each that she already owes us. You shall have it. Wait. Tomorrow night, if we succeed. But if we fail, nothing. Why didn't she come here herself? Perhaps she was a little shy of meeting you again, before she could give you your money. So when do we see her? Tomorrow night, with the merchandise. Well, look, we don't even talk until we get 250 each. Well, Lisa told me to give you 500 each, and the balance on delivery. Any objections? But first, may we have weapons on the table? Search me, I'm clean. Your brass knuckles? What brass knuckles? In your right pocket. Now I cannot negotiate in an atmosphere of mistrust. And your little razor blade, Mr. Talon. And how do you protect yourself? Geraldine protects me. Isn't she beautiful? What did she do? This. Then may we have Geraldine on the table too? Well, we may not. Why not? Because she is the referee. Just a minute, Mr. Rote. What's the merchandise? A child's doll. A doll? A musical doll. Lisa last saw it a few days ago in Montreal. But she now believes it is somewhere in this apartment. How did it get here? While Lisa was at the airport in Montreal, she got into a conversation with a very nice photographer named Sam Penrose. And she asked him if he would take this doll to her little girl who was in the New York hospital. And he was mostly pathetic. But before he had time to deliver it, Lisa arrived at this apartment herself and asked for it. And then much to her surprise, he just couldn't find it. What do you mean he couldn't find it? He couldn't find it. Lisa watched him search both these rooms. And then, pretending as if it was of no importance, she left. And that was last night. How big is this doll? Weight? About two pounds. So allow eight ounces for the music box. That's a lot of horse. Is this the real stuff? Pure heroin? Nothing has ever been so pure. That'll be worth over 50 grand. You push it yourself. Now, children. Let's not be getting too greedy. Let's find the doll first, shall we? So Lisa sent you here to find it. Why does she need us? This morning, Lisa phoned this apartment, and pretending she was an Italian actress named Lee Gianna, she made an appointment to have some photographs taken by Mr. Hendricks at his studio tonight. Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks left this apartment just before seven. They walked to a movie theater where he left his wife, and he went on to a studio where he is still waiting. Look, are you getting any, any of this? Sure, just pay attention. Well, I'm lost. So listen. Look, Mr. Broke, I'm a first grade dropout, so just give it to me like A, B, C. Lisa wants me out of here so she can come in and really go through this place, right? That is correct. So right now, the wife is at some movie and the photographer is waiting for some Italian broad who doesn't even exist. How long is he going to wait? Well, perhaps we had better reassure him, if you'll excuse me. Giano's restaurant. I have a message from Miss Vigiano. But she is so very sorry to be late. 
No, 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 wait, please. She is on her way to you now. I put her in a taxi two minutes ago. A taxi para señorina, Vigiana, Solito. Mr. De Hendricks, any moment Miss Vigiana will arrive. Be kind and wait for her. Yes, yes, thank you, sir. Well, goodbye. Now we're holding there a bit longer. So Lisa's already been in here tonight? Yes, she searched everywhere, still couldn't find her. So she searched everywhere. How did she open this? Now, there's a locked closet in the bedroom. I'll go open that right now. It's not in the closet. How do you know? Lisa looked. She found the key on the ledge just above. And this? Well, does Lisa know about this safe? She does, and that's why you're here. Well, it's a bit out of our line, but okay. We'll make the photographer open the safe when he gets back here. But look, Mr. Rote, we aren't squeamish, are you? I am, and that's not why you're here. Suppose, after some persuasion, he did open the safe, and it wasn't there. Then what? The doll's in that safe, you can buy the one. Now that's a chance Lisa won't take. It may be in there, or he may have taken it someplace else. He may even have given it to the police. We have to slide into this very gently. Believe me, Lisa didn't call you two in for nothing. What did she say? She said, don't let them twist any arms, and you're not to steal anything. Let the wife find the doll and give it to you of her own free will. So it'll be like old times. So we con them out of it. Better find out all you can about this guy. What was his name again? Hendrix. Sam Hendrix. Flew to Montreal last Monday. Returned New York yesterday. And look what I can see, right by the parking lot. What? A phone booth. Great. And two blinds, which gives us nine signals. Six. Nine. Up, open, and down. Three twos are six. It's three squared, you thing. Now you've left me behind. Just a little system of ours. One of us goes, salt, salt. And then the phone rings. Just leave this to us, Mr. Roach. Thank you. Oh, by the way, the number of that phone booth in the parking lot is 924-5309. Here. And uh, now make a note of that number. And there's some information over on that wall, Mike. When do we start all this? Tonight? Tomorrow. A proud grandfather from Asbury Park will phone Mrs. Hendricks and ask him to come take some pictures of his family tomorrow afternoon. One hour by express bus, $75 and stay to dinner. And that gets the husband out of the way. Now there's a Volkswagen bus in the parking lot. Mike? Oh, there you are. There's a Volkswagen bus in the parking lot. I'll meet you there in 10 minutes. You stay in here, Mr. Rope? Just a quick look around. In case I've forgotten anything. We'll stay with you then. Better not all leave together. Oh, I guess you're right. Come on then, Sergeant Carlino. Before we go, the key to that locked closet in there. What about it? It's not on the ledge. Is it? Then Lisa must have taken it with her. Won't they miss it when they get back? Oh, uh, they'll each think the other one will it. Then there's just one question before we leave here, Mr. Rote. Yes? Lisa told you an awful lot, didn't she? Lisa. Lisa. All those little details about how she worked and about us. You see, we know Lisa very well. Yeah, and she would never give you anything unless she had to. So what's your question? We'd just like to know where you've hidden the key to that locked closet in there. All right, you. Through that door backwards and turn back. Catch it. Now, drop Geraldine on the floor. Nice and easy. I'd rather not do that. Drop it. Children, children. Will you settle for this? Flip it. Now, won't you sit down, Mr. Rote? Thank you. Now! Dirty little creature. No, don't! Why? Lisa was too clever, Mike. I felt certain she knew where it was. And then, too late. 
forgetting something. You're already involved, aren't you? I can prove where I was when this happened. Oh? Exactly when did it happen? Just before you let me in? By the way, I'm not on parole, and no policeman has ever heard of me. But someone must have seen you with her somewhere, never. I followed Lisa on several occasions, but we never actually met until she walked in here tonight. All that stuff she told you about us? She told you all that tonight? That, and a good deal more. Look, Mr. Rope, you're just trying to get away with this, but we are out. Come on. Sorry, Mike, but you were both so highly recommended, and I need you. Well, that's just too bad. And now you've got a body in there, and you're stuck with it. Let's go. Now just listen, children. Think, think, think. If you walk out of me now, I will simply walk out after you and leave Lisa in there. Now you have signed your names all over this apartment. And even if you could remember everything you've touched, it would take at least an hour to wipe off. Now I have touched only one thing since I've been in here. And before that, I wore these. Highly recommended, by the way, and disposable. You buy them in enormous rolls from Hamburger Schlemmer. Oh, don't forget to say, Sergeant. And the icebox. Now just do exactly what I tell you, and the police will never even come in. Will you stop acting like a housemaid and listen? You've got all tomorrow to do that. Now first, get her out of here. Roll her up in this, and then dump it where I found it, and meet me in the Volkswagen. Look, just let us out of this. No, I need you. For what? Now everything we just planned still holds good. We simply con the wife into giving us the doll, and that's it. No one gets hurt, not even a scratch. There is one minor difference, perhaps, in that instead of working for Lisa, you're now working for me. Then there's one other difference, Mr. Rope. You promised us our 2,000 plus one each, less this 500, of course. But things have changed since then. Yeah. All right, two plus two, then. No, we want 2,000 plus another 5,000 each, tomorrow night. Okay, now she's alone. Stay exactly where you are, and don't even breathe. Tammy? Sam? Gloria? somewhere, so I came by taxi. How else? Yes, a taxi. You mean walk to your studio now? Oh no, I'm staying right here. When will you be home? Eleven? Well, in that case, I guess I'd better trot over and keep the score. You needn't worry, honey. I'm not going to cramp your style. Oh, ciao. are supposed to be there. Gloria? No, come on, I know you're there. You can't fool me, you know.
plus five, Mr. Rose. Two plus five, Mr. Tom. Just two seconds. What murder? They found a body somewhere near here. Who told you? On the radio. I only heard the end of it. I think it was a woman from Scarsdale or somewhere. You making this up? Why should I? It's a ploy to make me stay home. It's not. Okay, windows. You'd really rather I didn't go? Serious? Of course. Well, no. No, I mean, yes, I always want you to stay home, but not because someone's been murdered. Because of me. Uh, do you need the ceiling lights? Oh, yes, please. It's a big loomy. Okay. That one I need. Sorry. Now, quick check. Phone number for police emergency. Just dial zero and say your blood. Operators get busy and don't answer. Oh, that urgent. So the murder does worry you. This one you must know. 440-1234. Wait till I get the sugar lumps. Okay, so it's 440, oh, not 044, oh, four, but 440, oh, one, two, three, four? Then ask for the sixth precinct. Sixth precinct, uh, two plus four. Okay, doctor's office, 924 6381. Want the Chinese laundry? Now, my bus leaves at five and they return from where? At Asbury Park. At? Uh, Every hour on the hour. I'll phone you as soon as I get there and again when I'm leaving. Oh, and if that doll woman phones, just tell her I still haven't found it. Okay. And try to get her phone number. Maybe Gloria's seen the doll. No, she hasn't. I asked her mother. But let Gloria look around for her while she's down here. It must be somewhere. That child isn't coming here today. Just to do your shopping. Grocery list of five dollars by the phone. No, Gloria! Okay, where is it? By the cabbage. What's wrong with Gloria? Everything. Well, she can't even close the icebox. Uh, am I getting anywhere near? Yes, but you're not searching. Try a couple more feet to the left. If she doesn't close the icebox, just say, close the icebox. And if she still doesn't? Then just say, that's the girl thinks. What do you mean, that's the girl thinks? It's still open. It's a little trick I learned in the Marines, sweetheart. Always assume that an order's been carried out. Then if she hasn't closed it already, she'll be so embarrassed. Gloria isn't a marine, and she doesn't embarrass that easily. You'd much rather have a dog. Dogs can't shop at the supermarket. And dogs can't rearrange the furniture either. That's Gloria's latest hobby. Whenever we're gone, she borrows her mother's key and sneaks in here and turns everything around. I nearly broke both my legs last night. <sighs> now where has she hidden the garbage mill? I've been hunting for it all morning. Here. Now, put it back where it belongs. Where was it? On top of the washer, where you must have put it. It was Gloria! Oh, come on now, take it easy on this kid. Her daddy's just left him again, and her mother's out looking for him. She's been battered back and forth like a sawed-off shuttlecock. And on top of that, she's having to wear glasses for the first time. By the way, call her Four Eyes. Four Eyes? 
the glasses. It's what the kids at school are calling her and she can't take it. So they'll go on until she can. So? So if we call her that too, she'll get used to it much quicker. I don't know if I dare. <laughs> now you're scared of a nine-year-old girl. Icebox needs to be frosty, but my way this time? Your way? And if I burn both my hands off? Don't. Unguentine's in the emergency drawer. Defrosty the icebox. Do I have to have a project every time you're away? And if it stops raining, try walking over to my studio and back. And no cheating. Did I cheat last night? How about that old lady that helped you across 6th Avenue? You were watching? Only while you cross 6th. How about it, huh? Just once to the studio and back, all by yourself? Do I have to be the world's champion blind woman? Yes. Well, how about just a little bronze medal now and then? I'm an awfully good loser. Much sooner have a winner. I'm holding out for you, sweetheart. Hey, cheat, I've been there once already. Just don't ever leave me. That chance. Is she meeting you at the bus station? No, it's a he. No, I, I mean that woman who didn't show up last night, leeching on her or whatever. <laughs> oh, her. Yes, well, she went on ahead to get the back seat. <laughs> Nowhere near. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Penny. I didn't realize you were there. I'm here now. Take it easy. <laughs> Admit it, that's my first lucky punch in weeks. Yes, you were lucky and I've got a nosebleed. And I'm going to miss that bus. Oh, before you go, uh, tell me where the icebox plugs in at. Huh? The refrigerator. Where does it plug into the wall? Oh, you'll find it. And don't ask Gloria either. I don't need Gloria, and I certainly don't need you. Ha! Huh. Phoenix in a couple of hours. I'm sorry. Uh, do you all come from New York? No, some friends let me in their apartment for a few days. Oh, here's your laundry. Oh, thank you. So, and I thought I saw Sam as I was passing in a cab on 8th Street, so I looked him up on the phone book. Yes, he has a studio here there. Go ahead and sit down. Well, just for a minute, thanks. I see he's still a camera bug. Yeah, he began studying when he left the Marines. Uh, is that for you? Uh, yes it was. You were in the... The... Seems so long ago. I've almost forgotten. The... Oh, here it is. No, no, don't tell me. Um, the 3rd Training Battalion Charlie Company? Charlie Company, that's it. <laughs> Good old Charlie Company. Did you know Sam in those days? Oh, no. We first met about a year ago, just after my accident. And then we got married six months later. You lost your sight in an accident? Yes, it was an automobile accident. Well, Sam and I first met five feet underwater. Well, but I guess he's told you that one. No. I drove my Jeep into a canal, and, well, I guess he saved my life. Well, that makes two of us. Oh? Well, I was practicing how to cross with the lights, and by the time Sam yanked me out, the cars were piling up all around me. He wasn't very polite about it either. Oh, boy, you don't have to tell me. Were you scared of him? Oh, we all were. Until we got to know him, of course. He was just a perfectionist, I guess. 
And he still is. Of course, he's the one who should be blind to be terribly good at it. Blind Sam. Huh. I know I shouldn't <laughs> laugh, Mrs. Henderson. No, no, don't worry about it. Now, he would be the world's champion blind man. Who is that? Gloria? Who is that? A little girl. Oh, come in, Gloria. She went out. Does Sam still get up to Canada every now and then? Yes, in fact, he was visiting his parents there last week. Did you ever meet them? Uh, no, I never did. Uh, well, I'm sure sorry to have missed it, Mrs. Henderson. Well, drop us a card next time you're around. Thank you, Mrs. Henderson. Susie. Susie. Well, I better go pick up my bags. And tell Sam I said hello for me. Uh... Mike Tolman. Mike Tolman. That's right. Well, goodbye, and thank you so much for putting... Oh, my God! Hello? Oh, you're still there. I I'm terribly sorry, but the fire's out now. Yes, in fact, it wasn't even in here at all. It was upstairs. It was, it was just some soup that had burned up on the stove, but you could smell it from blocks. Well, this little girl was supposed to be watching it, but you know how they are sometimes. And, oh, no, no, she's fine. So it's all right now. I'm really sorry. How awful. Mike? Who's there? What, Sue? Oh, hello, Gloria. Who was that man who was in here? Oh, that was Mr. Tallman. He's an old friend of Sam's. Oh, I see. Is the grocery list ready? Yes, it's by the phone, and it's five dollars. Can you see it? Yes, I have it. What else? Nothing else. My job for today is to defrost the icebox. If you'd like to help me, Well, what did you do just then? Switched to the boss, of course. No, that's not how we do it. It is too. I've done it for mother hundreds of times. Not with this one. If you switch this one to defrost, the milk freezes solid and all the jars crack open. We just have to do it Sam's way. We just pull out the cord at the back and then take everything out and put two pans of boiling water into the freezer. Okay, do it Sam's way then. I'll go to the AMP. Uh, did you shut the door? Of the icebox? Yes. I didn't hear it shut. Okay, then. It's open. Then will you shut it, please? Can't you shut it yourself? It's right by you. Oh, that's the girl. Thanks. For what? Oh. Well, I thought you closed it. Well, I didn't. Now look here, Four Eyes. I thought I made this clear. When I open something, I can. And when you open something... Did you drop that by mistake? No. Well, then pick it up. Now! Don't you ever talk about that again! I do not steal! Steal? Who said anything about stealing? You did. I know Sam would never say a thing like that. You told Mother I'd stolen a doll of yours. What would I want with a silly doll? I never said anything about the time. Whatever you get down and pick it up. Nothing. Sorry, Gloria, I shouldn't have said that. What does it mean? Nothing. It just popped out. You see what happens when you push someone too far? I know some dirty words too, you know. And I wouldn't have called you four eyes either. If Sam... So why did you? Doesn't Sam call you that? Sam likes me. He can call me what he likes. Gee, thanks. I'll be sure to tell him. What will you tell him? If you tell Sam anything about this, I'll tell him. What? About that man who was in here. Heard. What do you mean, I heard? From M. Tall Man, Arizona. Well, what have you got there? He left a package on the safe. By mistake, I'm sure. Well, you better leave it there. Of course. He'll be back. I don't think I like it today. I think you'd better just go. Okay, I'll go then. I've closed the icebox. And leave the grocery list and the money. I'll just go to the store myself. But before you go, you better pick up every single one of those things you threw down with. And if you don't know where something goes, then just give it to me. Will you tell Sam? I tell Sam everything. Then pick them up yourself. Okay, I will. Now go on, get out of here. Beat it! And don't you ever come down here again. Please don't tell Sam. Susie. 
Susie, I wanted to help you today. Thanks, I put that away. You won't tell Sam, will you? Tell me what's broken. Go on, don't be afraid. Oh, nothing's broken. I only threw unbreakers. Well, that was crafty of you. Who taught you that? Daddy. Oh? Does he throw things sometimes? Boy, he sure did the night he left. He went around the whole apartment throwing all the embroidery on the floor. But Mother finally got wise to this and said, Well, just look at you. You can't even break it. And when we woke up the next morning, he'd gone. Look out! What is it? It's just a small kitchen knife. Looks sharp. It is. Thanks. Honey, no rush. Come in! I'll get it. You can call me four eyes one day if you like. But not just yet, if you don't mind. I would like to speak to Mr. Sam Hunt! I beg your pardon? Who are you? Please? Where is she? Where is Mrs. Rose? I think you must have the wrong address. My name is Susie Hendricks. I'm blind. May I have a glass of water, please? Uh, I'm not feeling too well. Okay, uh, just wait a minute, I'll, I'll bring it out to you. What are you doing in there? And you can tell Sam Hunt that if he doesn't leave her alone, I'll kill him! Hello, it's Mike Tomlin again. I'm sorry, but I think I'm a... Mike, stop him! I don't know who he is! Do! Don't touch me! Don't you dare touch me! I found it! I found it in the house of sin! Wait a minute, come back here. Mike, don't go. What happened? I don't know. He just barged in and then he ran around and made a lot of noise and went into the bedroom and, and then he emptied your bedroom dresser all over the floor. I'll call the police. Uh, the number is 440-1234. Don't worry, Susie. I'll take a later flight to Phoenix. I'll stay here till Sam gets back, okay? Thank you. Well, maybe that little girl will be able to identify him. Just write your address down here, will you? Uh, how many houses are in this uh, apartment, Miss Hendricks? Oh, uh, just two. This one and then the one upstairs. See, and you say he was waving something in his hand, Mr. Tallman? Yes, it looked like a thin leather book of some kind. Uh, here's my address. Excuse me, Mrs. Hendricks, it's a little dark in here. Uh, is this your permanent address, Mr. Tolman? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I see. Well, I won't bother you anymore. And don't worry, Mrs. Hendricks, if your husband does find something missing, he'll let me know, I'm sure. Yes, he will. Thank you for coming so quickly. You're entirely welcome. Hello? Yes, yeah, just a moment, please. Sergeant Carlino? I'll get him. Sergeant Carlino, you're wanted on the phone. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hendricks, it's just going to be one of those days. Carlino. Yes, sir. You mean he just walked in? A doll? Uh, have you told me? G give me a few minutes. Sh sure, I understand. And did they find the old man? Mrs. Hendricks, maybe I should mention one thing while I'm here. I didn't want to alarm you, but they found an a woman outside here last night. Yes, I know. You say you knew her? No, I, I only heard about it on, on the radio. Oh, I see. Your husband didn't know her by any chance? No. Of course he didn't. I'm sorry, Mr. Tolman, but we've been told to make inquiries. 
Did you hear anything peculiar last night? No, but we were out most of the evening. I see. And you and Mr. Hendricks were together all evening, I suppose? No, I, I went to a movie for about an hour while he was working at his studio. Was there anyone else with him? Hey, what is this? Uh, no, he, he was supposed to photograph the woman, but she never showed up. Are you questioning Mrs. Hendricks for any particular reason? I'm not questioning her, Mr. Tomlin. Then why are you taking notes? Mike? I am not taking notes. I was just checking to see... To see what? If there was anything else I did want to ask. Well, if there is, I suggest you wait until Mr. Hendricks returns home. Now look, I am allowed to talk, aren't I? Talk? Yes, but Mrs. Hendricks doesn't have to answer any questions that she doesn't want to. And if they didn't teach you that at the police school, then read the Constitution. Okay, then. No more questions. But they found that old man yet. Mr. Tolman, you're not a lawyer by any chance. No, I'm not, but... No, I didn't think you were. Well, a fat lot of help he was. That old man could be in New Jersey by now. Mike, is this room very dirty to you? No, why? Sergeant kept dusting everything. Well, didn't you notice? No, did he? Yes, by the refrigerator and in that corner by the safe. I'll get it. He's probably thought of some more silly questions to ask. Good afternoon, Mr. Hunt? No, Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks live here. Hendricks? Well, I beg your pardon, but this is 27B Grogan Street? Yes, it is. Well, my name is Rope, Harry Rope Jr. May I ask if an elderly gentleman dropped by today? Well, I don't know if he dropped by exactly. Well, Mr. Hendricks, if I may come in for a moment. You see, that was my father. Well, yes, come in, please. Thank you. Mr. Rope, Mrs. Hendricks is blind? Oh, I understand. Thank you. Mike? You all right? Yes, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Rote? I'm so very sorry this happened, Mrs. Hendricks. I do hope my father wasn't rude in any way. Well, now, he opened all the drawers in the bedroom. Was that rude, do you think? Oh, my goodness. But let me reassure you, this is not as serious a matter as you may think, Mr. Hendricks. Tallman, I'm a friend of Sam's. Mr. Tallman, my father may appear a little erratic at times, but I assure you that he would never harm anyone. Well, certainly not. But he just told her that if he didn't leave somebody alone, then he... Gloria? It's only your groceries. I'll come back later. Well, you can leave them now if you like. Uh, what did my father say? He said that if somebody didn't leave some woman alone, he would kill him. Oh, did he mention the name Sam Hunt? Yes, I, I think that's what he said. Oh, well, then I can explain all this quite easily. You see, my father came to this apartment because he thinks your husband is a photographer named Sam Hunt. Well, as you can see, my husband is a photographer, but look, we can clear all this up right away. Mike, there should be a photograph of Sam and me on the dresser. It's a wedding photograph in a leather frame. I I'm afraid that won't help me very much. You see, I've never actually seen this man. Well, just who is he, anyway? About three years ago, my wife was on vacation in Montreal. And while she was there, my father tells me, she and this man became acquainted. So your wife meets some guy three years ago, and now her father threatens to kill him. For what? My father alleges that they have been seeing each other from time to time, ever since. And now if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Hendricks, I must find my father. Before you go, Mr. Rose, how did you get here? Did you follow your father here today? Uh, in a way, yes I did. But... Then, then you were waiting outside the entire time he was in here? Why didn't you do something to stop him? Well, I didn't follow him here exactly. Then how see, exactly did you know this address? I was hoping not to have to tell you this. Well, please tell us. I believe my father followed my wife to this apartment. When? Well, last Sunday, my father had invited us to dinner at his club. My wife arrived late and said she couldn't stay very long because she had to call a friend who was flying to Montreal the next day and she had to give him something. And then my father became very testy and wanted to know his name and what it was she had to give him. My wife finally became annoyed and said, well, if you must know, it's that doll of mine that you broke. And then she got up and walked out. A, a doll, did, did you say? Yes, it, it was a musical doll. Was it? 
Yes? You, you said it's your wife? I had to give a doll to a friend who was flying to Canada? Yes. Last Monday? That's right. Why did she have to do that? Because this doll wasn't just a toy. It had been specially made for her in Montreal. It played a little tune that was a favorite of hers. So her friend said that he would take it back to the makers and have it fixed and then bring it back to her. Now it was right after my wife walked out on us that night, my father said to me, it's that doll Sam Hunt gave him. And then he followed her. And then the next morning, I found this note under my door. It simply says, Dear Harry, Sam Hunt lives at 27B Grogan Street in Greenwich Village. Dad. And then this morning when I told him that Lichiana hadn't come home last night. Who? Who didn't come home last night? Lichiana, my wife. But she frequently comes to Manhattan and then decides to stay with friends. She usually phones to say where she is, but so far we haven't heard anything. Shall I get it, Susie? Hello? Uh, one moment. Susie, it's Sergeant Carlino. He wants to speak to you. Susie! What does he want? Can I just go to Mrs. Hendricks? No, I'll take it. Hold on, his son is here now. Mr. Rowe, don't go. The police want to speak to you. Who? The police. No! No, tell them I've gone! But it's about your wife. What? And your father's at the police station. Hello? Speak. Well, that's right. Well, no, she didn't, but... Is she hurt? No, no, tell me now! Mr. Rhodes! Mr. Rhodes! Mike, don't go! No, of course not. He left the door open. Well, that's some family, the Rose. It seems that the old man has just walked into Carlino's office and said that Mrs. Rhodes has been in some kind of accident. She's dead. What? She was murdered just outside here last night. You knew that? The entire time he was here? I only realized when he spoke on the phone just now. The sergeant must have told him. It was on the radio and I... I think they even mentioned her name only I just wasn't listening properly. Mike, could you please phone the bus station and ask him to get Sam to phone me immediately? Sure, but look, you're not worrying about anything that old man is going to say. He's obviously nuts. But there's something you don't know, Mike. Sam did bring a child's doll back from Canada. But it can't be the same one. But exactly like the one he just described now. I, I was trying to help Sam unpack or something because I knocked off to bed and just played a few notes. And I said, ah, oh, surprise or something like that. I thought it was a prison for me. Sam said, no, it's for a little girl. So some woman he, he met at the airport in Montreal and asked him to bring it here for her. Someone he said he'd never met before. So Sam took it to the hospital? No, no, that woman. It must have been Mrs. Rote. She came by here late the night to pick it up, only Sam couldn't find it anywhere. It must still be here somewhere, and, and that woman who was murdered last night, Elitiana, that was Mrs. Rote too. Now just take it easy, Susie. Suppose Sam didn't know her. That's not so serious. Mike, could you find me a wedding photograph of Sam and me? It should be on the dresser in a leather frame. Not on the dresser. Oh, that's what the old man was carrying when he left the house. He's taken a photograph of Sam to the police. Then let's phone Carlino and- No! No, don't you get it? Carlino kept talking about a doll. And all those questions about where Sam was last night and about that murder woman? They must have been Sam killed her. Susie. What is it? There's a police car just down the street. And they're watching this house.
Hello? Yes. Yes, it is. Asbury Park bus station. Let me be. He caught the five o'clock bus from Manhattan. Are you sure? He wasn't on it. But he must have been. Well, maybe he missed it. He had my phone. Are you okay? No. That's the third time it happened, hour, and I just broke a lamp in the bedroom. Well, let me help you up. No. It's no good, Mike. I can't. If you could at least remember where Sam keeps the key that filing cabinet. Just have to wait for Sam to get back. I just can't understand why he has a phone by now. We can't wait for Sam. We've got to find that doll and destroy it. And anything else that might connect Sam and Mrs. Rote. If we don't... Back in the freezer. What do you mean, back in the freezer? The key to the filing cabinet. I know it's a funny place. Is it there? Yes, it's frozen in. There should be a $20 bill back there, too. Do you see it? Uh, yes, I see it. <laughs> we put it there when we, when we moved in. I guess we ever starved to death. Well, is the doll there? No, but this is. Hey, now we're off. These are all the keys we have. There's one for everything that's locked. Well, there should be a small key up with a large paper tag. A uh, small suitcase? That's it. Those were sent these important papers and stuff. Thanks, Mike. I'm feeling much better now. Mike? Here, Susie. Could you please open this? Well, is the doll in here or not? No doll. Well, here, <coughs> look these over, just in case. Can you see all right? See what? To read the letters. <coughs> oh sure, the light is on. Fan them up from her. Throw away the just, just burn them in the sink. Well, they're all from you, Susie. You type pretty well. That's a relief. I didn't know Sam was such a hoarder. I knew he'd even show them to you. And you haven't found anything yet. Of hers? Not yet. And we've looked in just about every place it could be. Everywhere except this safe. I only just noticed it was here. This is the light that hangs from the ceiling, right? Yes. On now? On? Why? It's nothing, only. I noticed that Sergeant Carlino had to fiddle with those blinds, and yet this switch was on. I dumped it. Well, they're on now, anyway. Do you suppose Sam could have put the doll in the safe? In the safe? No, it couldn't be in there. And Mr. Rope did the very same thing. Did what? He opened the blinds, too, didn't he? Did he? Well, I presume he didn't close them. And I, did you notice how I kind of jumped whenever Rope came down the stairs? Yes, why? For a minute. I thought it was the old man. You mean that they were together? Yes. Of course, I realized right away I was wrong, but he had exactly the same walk as his father. And the same shoes. Oh, you mean they sounded the same. But exactly the same. New shoes and one of them squeaked a bit. You probably didn't notice. No, I didn't. You're wearing old loafers. Sam wears them most of the time. Is that the police car still outside? Uh, yes, it is. And they're looking this way. Can you see their faces? Not too well. Well, try it. It's very important. Why? This may surprise you, Mike, but is one of those men Mr. Rote? Mr. Rote? Well? The old man of the sun. Rote Jr. Now, what would he be doing in a police car? There's a radio in that car, though, isn't there? I don't know. Suppose there is. I'm just wondering if... Do you suppose that Mr. Rote could possibly be a policeman, too? <laughs> now, what makes you think that? First of all, Carlino fiddles with those blinds, and then the police phone and asks to speak to him. And then Rope fiddles with them, and the police phone him, and... He didn't. He phoned you. Or did he? Oh, I see. You mean sending each other messages via these blinds? And the police radio? Something like that. Anyways, you have to admit, if they did suspect Sam, that would be a pretty neat trick. And when Rope first mentioned the doll, I nearly told him all about it. I doubt if the police work like that. You see, I know Mr. Rote's story and Sam's just don't match, but... There's something I forgot. What? That I know Sam, and I don't know Mr. Boyd at all, do I? Look, Susie, 
If Sam can explain all this fine, then there's nothing to worry about. But if he can't, I want to help him. Now, why don't you want to tell me about the safe? It couldn't be in the safe because, well, it just isn't even ours. When we first moved in here, the, the lady that owned this apartment before us tried to sell it to us for two hundred dollars, and then one hundred, and then fifty. When we finally made it clear that we just didn't want it, she walked outside and Sam saw her deliberately drop the key down the drain. Susie, are you making this up? Of course not. Why should I? I mean, not that I would blame you. I wouldn't want to open up my safe in front of a complete stranger, even if I could watch him. Have I been treating you like a complete stranger? Well, no. Just, I wish that doll was in the safe, and then nobody could find it, could they? I wouldn't count on that. If the police get a search warrant, and they may, they could have it opened up. Have you thought of that? Open this safe without a key? They could drill it open. Well, let's hope they try. That would take hours, wouldn't it? And by that time, Sam will be home. Well, you better make sure it's in there. You really believe? Not now, but when I'm gone. You're going? Where? To the apartment where I've been staying. Why? Just to pick up my things, I'll bring them over here. But do you have to go now? Someone else is moving in there tonight, and I have to return the key. I won't be long. Well, then you better give me the phone number. What Just phone in number? case. It's the place where you're going now. But it's just around the corner. But in case you're delayed or if I do find the dog. Uh, I'll phone you when I get there. But just give me the name or the address or something so I can call information. I just may have it written down somewhere. But can you remember it? Sure I can. Okay, go on. WA4 924, same as this one. Go on. 5309. 5309. Oh, that one's a stinker. Okay. There's always one magic number. I'll be 30 in two years, and that's almost three, isn't it? And three threes are nine, and twice three is six, except it's five, not six, so it's five thirty eight. Five three zero nine? That's right. How long can you remember that? About two and a half minutes, so hurry. And lock that straight door in case Carlino comes back. Okay, locked. And Mike? Yes? I don't know what I would have done if you had to come by today. Not many people around. It's still 
still raining. Can I get down now? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, no, wait. When we first moved in here, Sam used to make us phone calls from a phone booth. Uh, somewhere out there, I think it was there's some traffic lights. Can you see a phone booth? Yes, there's one by the parking lot at the end of the street. Is there a car park anywhere near it? One of those Volkswagen buses. It's right beside it. Anyone in it? I can't see. It has curtains all around. Is something the matter, Susie? You look awfully worried. No. Let me find one Sam gets home. Would you like me to stay with you until he... There's a man getting out now. What? Uh, the Volkswagen? Yes. And he's talking to someone inside. I can't see who it is. Now he's coming this way. Is it Mr. Rose? Or the man who you thought was a detective? No, it isn't. Sam hasn't done anything, has he? No. Do you remember that doll that your mother asked you about? Yes. Well, it belonged to that woman who was murdered last night. And if the police found it here, and they might think that Sam has something to do with that. That's why it's so important. Look out! What is it? There's a man looking through the window. Can he see you? No, but he's still looking. It's the man from the Volkswagen. Don't let him see that dog. Now he's gone. Well, that's the street door, uh, and it's locked. What if you can lock the back door? Quickly! We can't. I think Daddy took the key with him. We've got to hide that doll somewhere. Anywhere. I'll take it upstairs. No. No, in here. Where on earth did you find it? It was just lying by the table next to the settee. I guess it must have fallen off. We've been searching for that doll for over an hour. You've got to tell me. I took it. Why? When I first saw it in here, I thought it was a present for me. But Sam said it was for another little girl. So I stole it. It's under the garbage. You can't possibly see it. How would you like to do something this difficult? And terribly dangerous? Yes, what? Can you see that phone booth from upstairs? From Mother's bedroom, I think. We should have write down our phone number. Now listen very carefully. This is very important. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to watch that phone booth. Don't take your eyes off it, not for a second. Now if anyone from the Volkswagen goes in and makes a phone call, I want you to phone me the minute they come out. Got it? Sure. Only the Volkswagen people and only when they come out of the focus. Can you do that? No problem. Oh, no wait. I got a better idea. When you phone me, I won't answer. Just let it ring twice. I know. Like a signal. A friend of Daddy's does that. Only she does it seven times. Susie, if you need me for anything, just bang on the water pipe. You can hear it from all over the house. Where is it? By the stove. I'll show you. Just a second, Sergeant. I'm on the phone. Uh, and a large bottle of aspirin and a box of Kleenex. Well, that should be all for now, honey. Sure. I I've got to get off the phone now. There's someone at the door. I'm sorry to get you waiting, Miss Sergeant. But I'm glad you came back because some kids are playing in the back. And I think they might have broken some glass in the bathroom. Would you mind taking a look? I've got more important things to do, Mrs. Hendricks. Well, it would only take a moment, if you would, please. There is nothing wrong with the bathroom window. Oh? Well, I, I, I thought I heard glass breaking. Uh, how about this? It's okay. Oh. I'm sure I heard glass breaking somewhere. Thank you for looking anyways. Was there something you wanted to ask me? I understand that Mr. Rope called on you just now. Yes, he did. I just thought I should mention that the woman who was murdered outside here last night was his wife. Oh? You don't seem very surprised to hear that. Well, from the way her husband behaved on the phone, I assumed something had happened. You seem to have been searching for something since I was last here, Mrs. Hendricks. Yes, I, I was searching for some bags for the vacuum cleaner. Oh, some bags for the vacuum cleaner. Huh. Well, maybe I can find them for you. No, no, please don't bother. No bother at all. You know, the other day my wife lost her only can opener. You'll never guess where I found it. In the washing machine? That's right. Just thought you might have done the same thing. 
Thank you, but I, I'd rather didn't look for them just now. Are you sure you weren't looking for something else, Mrs. Hendricks? Are you sure you weren't looking for a doll? A doll? I don't know what you mean. A doll which your husband brought back from Canada and which Mrs. Roe came here to collect the other night. I never knew Mrs. Roe. We know he did. Mr. Roe now recognizes your husband from a photograph his father had. Oh, you mean when she stole from our bedroom? And the old man remembers seeing your husband and Mrs. Roe together several times. Now where else might that doll be? In this safe, perhaps? In this safe? Why would my husband have put a doll in a safe? And if he did, you couldn't open it anyways, could you? Yes, as it so happens, I could. You could? Yes. Then will you open it? For you? Yes. Now? Yes. Certainly not. You'll need a warrant for that, and you know it. Oh, we will have a warrant in no time. Well, then you'll have to blast it, because you're going to get no help from me. It won't take us 20 minutes to drill that safe open, and before your husband gets back. And in the meantime, you are not to leave this house. Oh, Sergeant, is Mr. Rhodes still at the 6th Precinct? He's probably left there by now. Why? I just needed to ask him something, something very important. Would you mind giving me his phone number, please? His phone number? Yes. Oh, now, don't tell me you haven't got it. Well, of course, he gave it to me, but I don't have it on me. Maybe you can get some information. He lives in Scarsdale. I've already tried and it's not listed. Oh, but I know how I can get it. What are you doing? Four. Four. Oh. One. Two. Three. Four. They'll be to the sixth precinct and they can tell me how to get his phone number. Look, that number is only for police emergencies. I can dial my office direct. It's just possible he may still be there. Mr. Rhodes still there? No, the son. Mrs. Hendricks would like to speak to him. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes? My husband, Mr. Tallman, has just contacted a lawyer. And he has advised us that if you make any more accusations against my husband, then he will take immediate action. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Rhodes? Thank you. That lawyer friend isn't going to stop me, Mrs. Hendricks. I'll be right back with the search warrant. So it's, it's five, no, not six, but yeah, five, three, zero, nine. And Mike, I was right about Sergeant Carlino. He is a detective. He must have been. Hurry. Sergeant Carlino? Did you forget something? Sergeant Carlino!
in mind and lock the door. Well, you've got it? Yes. Well, where is it? Gloria? What's the matter? I thought for a minute there was someone else there. No, it was just the door. It didn't quite close. That's better. Is it still raining outside? Yes. Susie, where is the doll? You'll see. I won't be a second. Where's that box of keys? Where are you going? Where's the box of keys? It's in front of the settee. Is it in the safe? Could you please find me three keys on a ring? One large and two small. Is it in the safe? No, but I did look there. When? As soon as you had gone. Then all that nonsense about the old woman? I was just making that up. Well, come on, I thought you realized. I mean, as you said yourself, I don't know you that well. well come on, you're not hurt, are you? Is it in the safe? No, I told you, I already looked there. Are these the ones you want? Yes, thank you. Susie, you said you had found the doll. I know where it is. Where? It's locked up in Sam's desk. What desk? In his studio. How do you know it's there? Do you remember that little girl who came in while Mr. Rope was here yesterday? Yes. She told me. She filmed me from the drugstore. When? Just after you left. She wanted to know if I needed anything, and I thought I might as well ask her if she had seen the doll. Well, by golly, she had. When? Yesterday morning. I sent her to Sam's studio because I needed some money. She often does my shopping for me. And when she went into his little office at the back, there was a doll sitting on his desk. She thought it was a present for her, just as I had. Sam so said no, it was for another little girl. And then he locked it up in his desk. Strange place to put a doll. That's exactly what she said. It's a funny place to put a doll. Why would you want to lock it up for her? And what did Sam say to that? He said something rather odd. What? He said, oh, but this is a doll that even grown-ups would like to have. Susie, are you making this up? You can go ask her if you like. She's probably still there. It's a drugstore at the corner of 6th Avenue and 4th Street. Where are you going with that knife? There's a jar in the back of the studio. I'm going to slice that doll up into tiny pieces and flush it away. No, you can't go. Of course I can. I've been going there by myself for weeks now. I'll get it much quicker. But the studio's locked, and if anyone sees you, go in. I'll be careful. Which is the key? The large one lets you in, and one of the two small ones opens the drawer. But you have to open the middle one first, and they all spring open. For Mike? Yes? You'll come back? Sure, as soon as I got it. Then bring it with you. We'll dispose of it here. I will. Uh, where's the studio? 78 West 8th Street. 78 West 8th Street. I'll find it. Please be careful. Sergeant Carlino came back while you were gone. He did? Yes. What did he want? He just asked a lot of silly questions. He kept searching for that doll all over the room. He even looked in the washing machine. Can you imagine? But it's all right. He now thinks it's in the safe. By the time he gets back, there just won't be any doll, will there? There sure won't. Well, go on, Mike, and hurry. Okay. Good luck. Did you get me to a signal? Yes, you were wonderful. 
Now quickly, who was it who went into that phone booth? The first one was Sam's friend. Mr. Tolman? Yes. And before him? The man with the glasses. Who? That man I thought was a detective. That was Mr. Roach. And they just left the house with the police sergeant who was in here. They all went back to the Volkswagen. Susie, are Mr. Tolman and Mr. Roach police detectives too? They may be. Any room has been any chances. Do you know the Port Authority bus terminal? The what? I said, just ask for the biggest bus station in New York. I think it's near 42nd Street. Near 42nd Street? Here. Take all the money in this. All of it. What do I do when I get to the bus place? Ask where the buses come in from Asbury Park. Say that, come on, Asbury Park. Asbury Park. Meet every bus that comes in there. Just stay there all night if you have to. Sam will be on one of them. I can do that. What shall I tell him? Everything. About the doll? About the doll, the men, the books, and everything you can think of. Wait, before you go, can you find me some ammonia and some vegetable oil? Where are they? Uh, under the sink and on that shelf. Ammonia. Got it. Now pour some into this face. Quite a lot. Now watch out for your eyes. It's going to stink. Ugh. What's this for? For just in case. Go on, a little more. Okay, good. Now put a little bit of vegetable oil on top of that to stop it smelling. Hurry. Okay, that's good, that's good. Now put those bottles back where you found them. Now, where's the fuse box? The what? The fuse box. It's on the wall or the stairs, I think. Take me to it. Okay, now I want you to go around the whole house, turning on all the lights, starting in the bathroom, okay? On, on, on! Okay, okay. Not magic, honey, I'm just in an awful hurry. Those men are coming back here. That's okay, Susie, I'm not mad either. Is it dark outside yet? No, not quite. You should have hurry up. Close those drapes in the bedroom, too. I will. They just switched on the street. Good. All on. And here, too? Yes. Okay, now as I take out each fuse, I want you to tell me which light has gone off. You ready? Yes.
Susie? Susie, there's something I have to tell you. It's important. Hello, Mike. I was expecting you. And did you get to the studio all right? As it so happens, I did. No thanks to you. I don't know whether you've ever been there or not, but there is no desk. And no doll? How long have you known? About what? Me. That's much better, Mike. Isn't it? Now we can talk like sensible people. Where is it? You'll have to buy it. Go on, then. How much? Not money. I'll trade you truth for truth. Starting with Sam and Mrs. Rose. True or false? You know where it is. I can't trade you if you don't know. I know. Here? How about Sam? If I tell you, can I have it right now? In a few minutes, you could. Yes. Then it is here. Well? Sam didn't kill that woman. He first met her at the airport, just like he told you. So you aren't a policeman. Nor is Sergeant Carlino. No. Who is she? I can't tell you that. Did you kill her? No. To Mr. Roach? You don't have to know that either. Is it in the safe? Yes, it's in the safe. The key? It's already unlocked. Thank you, Susan. It's here. Yes. Yes. Now. Maybe your only chance. I need help. This is reason to be on the That was just stupid, wasn't it? The case, please. You said I could have I pinned it very carefully in somewhere in this apartment. I'm not going to search for it. You're going to get it to me now. And you're going to have to make me give it to you. Don't think I couldn't. Then you're going to have to hurt me very much. I'm not so sure you can do that. If you don't know me very well. I think I do. You don't know me at all, do you? You know, some people are very well in a short period of time. And you might be able to hurt me a little, but it's not going to be enough to matter. Perhaps you're right. Maybe I just couldn't hurt you enough. But suppose it was a man who could. And he was waiting right outside here, where he has been all day waiting just for this. All I have to do is walk out of here and you'll come in. Anything he does, you'll be doing yourself. You'll never forget that. I won't be here. Have it your way then. Go on then. Get out. You're worse than me. But why? How's Sam going to be when he comes back here and finds Get out. I won't give it to you. Okay, Susie. Get out! You come near me! You win. It's all over, Susie. You can keep your doll. I guess you've earned it anyway. And you needn't worry about Mr. Rhode any longer. Mr. Rhode is dead. Are you still lying? No more lies. I can't tell you who I am, or who Carlino is, and we never knew who Mr. Rhode was anyway. We only met him last night. But no more lies. You've killed him? When Ro was in here doing his old man act, Carlino and I flipped a coin and he won. I can't tell you why we had to kill him, but we did. And the three of us agreed that once I got in the doll, Carlino would bring his car around to the back alley. So, as Mr. Ro walked around in the back alley just now, 58 Pontiac through the back of the head. You better go, Mike. How much are you going to tell about us? Will you leave Sam and me alone? Always? That's a promise. Then I won't give you away. What about Sam? He'll do as I ask him. See, I am grateful. It's rather like thanking someone for not pushing you under a bus. But you could have hurt me, you didn't. Goodbye, Susie. And what are you going to do now? Run. I owe money to a Shylock and his boys are looking for me. That's why I had to do all this. I'll just run and run. We'll be the first time. There's a $20 bill at the back of that freezer. If that would help. We already took it. So thanks just the same. Goodbye, then. Uh-huh. No see, no tell. Good luck. Oh. 
Well, Susan, now all the children have gone to bed, we can talk. I'm going to lock us in here, Susie. So the dog it was that died. Of course, I knew they'd try to kill me the moment we had the dog. But when Carlina walked up to his car just now, he saw it start up all by itself and drive straight at it. Now, I couldn't resist switching on the lights just to catch his expression. I don't think I've ever seen anyone look quite so surprised. So it's in the safe, is it? Well, take your time. At best, Sam will just be arriving at St. Vincent's Hospital. You see, when he arrived there, he had received a message which said you had had a slight accident. And by the time they kept him waiting around there, all had finished. So won't you give it to me now? Please? I won't give it to you. I won't give it to you. I won't give it to you. You remind me of someone else who talked like that. Only she said, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I don't know. Over and over again. Now, I've heard people say that before. Only she was messed up. I don't know. I don't know. Do you frighten easily? It's just beside you. In front of the washer, would you pick it up? There's no need to be ashamed. Everyone's frightened of something. It's simply a question of whether you want to be outside in the street or locked in there with Mike. Won't you give it to me now? No. I won't give it to you. I don't know. I don't know. And then finally, as it always happens, something seemed to snap. And she told me everything she knew. Now, as it turns out, she didn't know where it was, but she told me everything she could. At last, she wanted to help me. And like her, you won't stop at that. When she'd answered all my questions, she went on. Other things, little things that just might be useful to me. And other things still, things I didn't even want to know. Little intimate things about herself and my Carlina. And I kept telling her, I don't want she went on and on and on. And then she was dead. Now I'm not going to ask you again for it, Susan. So when you want to give it to me, you have to tell me. Mr. Roach, are you looking at me? Yes. I can see you now, Susie. I have a whole box of matches here. You're over by the safe. No! I pulled it out! It's out! No, I'm not letting you get that I won't! Throw your match in front of the floor. Now! I'll set you on fire! They're on the floor. You stand perfectly still where you are. <coughs> Don't move! Never 
quietly you move, I can still hear you. I walk slowly to the bedroom door. Move up so I can hear you. I can't. I don't know where I am. Just find one of the walls and work your way around. It's not very difficult. I'm by the door. Go inside. Shut the door and knock on the other side. I have the key here. What are you going to do? Just go inside and shut the door. I'm going to lock you in. No, 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 let me stand here. I will move. I'll go sit at the table. And I'll keep knocking on so you'll know I'm there. No! Put it out! The gasoline! I'm at the table. And I'll keep knocking on so you'll know I'm here. Just keep tapping. To hand it to you, Susie. I don't know anyone who could have done this. You thought of everything. Just keep tapping! Keep tapping! You know, it's funny. When most people plan something, however clever they are, there's always some little thing they overlook. Keep tapping! But you, Susie. Keep tapping! You didn't forget anything, did you? <laughs> oh, won't it shut? Oh. So you see, it's all finished. You can relax now, Susie, it's all over. I have a knife! Now, get up and go to where you were standing before. Go on! I'll give you the thought. You're just leave us alone. No! Now, what was it you wanted to say? I'll give you the doll. Don't just leave us alone, I promise I'll give it to you. You have to say, please, may I give you the doll? Please, may I give you the doll? You may. key to the bedroom, please. Now if you go into the bedroom, please. <laughs> you know what you want, I can't even leave us alone. I'd like to do that, Susie, but I have a rule that has to be obeyed. You know the one I mean? That you must be punished. Not only really going to do what you are going to do to me. I'm going to lock you in there. Come on. That's right. But you mustn't shout. If I hear you shout, I'll set fire to the stairs. And then no one will be able to help you until the fire arrives. And by that time...
down here. I'll check upstairs. He's still in there. He's still bleeding. I stand a chance. Susie, I'm holding out for you. 